And Mac, let's turn it over to you. West Virginia, the first state to test this. Uh, you've said this is already live now in a couple of counties. You want to make it live for the primaries here uh, in May. And then also you want to get it ready for the midterms later this year. What is it going to take to get to that point? Well, it's just a matter of it's already up and running. The, uh, the technology has been proven. It's there. Uh, we already had a handful of votes uh, from various locations. And uh, we're excited that uh, Bradley Tusk has gotten behind this to uh, fund it so that we're not charging taxpayers of West Virginia any money on this. Uh, and it's his background with the expertise that he's brought in a number of diff different industries that uh, allowed me the comfort to move ahead with uh, what his uh, team is uh, proposing. And uh, like I said, it's up and running and we're, we're quite proud of it. Uh, and the people we're hearing from on the other side of the ocean are quite pleased with it as well. That's right. And you say, too, that your son has tested it, says that it's pretty slick. I think you said he uh, voted uh, using this in, in Italy. Um, but let's go back to the timing here. Why did you want to make this available for this May 8th primary? And then what will it take, if this is what you want, to get it rolled out to all of the armed services members that we have overseas? Well, let me just give you an example. I just got a text from my son this morning, and he had just gotten an email from uh, that says, don't miss your opportunity to vote in upcoming primary election. Re register now and request your absentee ballot. Well, we're just about a month away from this election. So think of him in Italy now requesting uh, the ballot to get it in the mail or get it to him and then to have to find a printer, a scanner, all those sorts of things, the, the hurdles or the obstacles to voting that overseas uh, military experience. Uh, he's already voted. He voted two weeks ago. And, and when you have a deployed military, to answer your question as to why me and why now, uh, I was in the military and I've had those experiences that are difficult, to, where it's difficult to vote. Think of a soldier on the hillside in Afghanistan or a sailor in a submarine off the coast of North Korea. Those are extreme barriers uh, to being able to vote. And when they, they're focused on a mission, and when they have those few minutes to think about an election back home, they want to do vote the same way that they order something from Amazon, uh, or, or bank. Well, let me break it down. We're talking three dimensions here. One is the first dimension of the actual vote itself. And then there's the, the voters, and that's where the manipulation by a Facebook, that the Russians were trying to use Facebook, Twitter, Google, and so forth to influence the voter, um, the, the aura around the voter, the information that they are accessing on their mobile phones or on TVs and so forth. And, and then there's the whole uh, societal impact, and that's where the Russians are trying to sow discord here within the United States. So we're talking three dimensions there. The dimension I'm worried about there is with the voter and the technology that secures that actual vote. And so far, the Russians have not changed one vote here in America. They are not going to be able to uh, break into the blockchain that hasn't been hacked yet. I'm confident in the, uh, the security of the blockchain that's going to secure these votes. And so, no, to answer your question, I do not have the concern. Uh, I have more concerns with the access to voting machines, uh, the transmission of data at the night of uh, the election. Uh, there are many other surfaces for attack in our traditional uh, voting than there is in this. I, I would love to be able to ha explain the full technology that goes behind the securing of uh, ensuring the identity of the voter that the, um, the county clerk provides to the vendor who is enabled to vote then the vendor sends that technology or the, the app uh, uh, notification to the soldier that tells him now his ball ballot is ready to vote. Once he votes, he's, he has to identify, he or she, through a, uh, a government-issued identity, say a passport, a military ID, a driver's license, that facial recognition, and then they take a selfie. And that selfie, you, you have to move your eyes. You have to verify that you're a live person. Then you vote, and at the end of the vote, you put a thumbprint so you have another biometric identification that secures you are that person voting. I think that's much more secure than many other types of voting that we have today.